Well, hi, Self Fellowship. This is Ryan Paulson to you coming um, to talk about Revelation 3, 7 through 13. And um, this is Jesus's letter to the church at Philadelphia. If you were with us this morning, what you heard was Philadelphia was designed as this missionary city. It was planted by someone um, who loved Greek culture, and it was planted strategically at a crossroads in order to spread Greek culture um, all throughout the region. And it was really successful in doing so. But it created some dynamics within the city that made it difficult for people to follow the way of Jesus. And so Jesus comes to this church, and um, he's going to write to them. And what I want you to pay attention to as we talk about in these videos, sort of how to study the Bible, one of the things to pay attention to as you read the scriptures is is the tone that's being set. Because Philadelphia, the Philadelphians, they are in this place where Jesus says to them, you have little strength. Liter- literally, little, little dynamin or power. It's where we get our English word dynamite. And so pay attention to the way that Jesus writes to the church at Philadelphia that has little strength. Here's what he says. These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. And what he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door. And I know that you have little strength, that you've kept my word and have not denied my name. And I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars, I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my word, sorry, I missed these. I will, I got too caught up in it. I will make them come and and know and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you've kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from this trial that's going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. Jesus continues, I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. The one who's victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So if you study the letter that precedes this to Sardis, there's this tone of, wake up, you guys. Like, come on. Um, there's more to be done. Don't get, don't get lazy. Don't get apathetic. Don't get complacent. But here, Jesus meets this church exactly where they are. And instead of calling them out, he makes them a number of promises. That's the tone. Um, He says, I will, I have, and I am. And all of these are because the church in Philadelphia has little strength. See, we said this Sunday, it bears repeating though. Jesus meets us where we are, not where we should be. He is incarnational through and through. He is relational, not mechanical. He is intentional, um, not one size fits all. He is incarnating himself to this church at Philadelphia, and because they have little strength, he makes them great promises which I think is a beautiful thing about our God. This whole letter, the tone of this letter, which is really important to pay attention to when you're studying scripture, is one of, um, hold on, hold on. I've, I've got great promises for you and I'm coming for you. That's what he says. Now, I want to end our time by um, pointing out a distinction here that the scriptures make that maybe um, is lost on you depending on um, whether or not you grew up hearing things like this. So here's what Jesus says in the middle part of verse 12. One of his promises to this church is that there's a new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven. 
So you have these two different ideas, these two different hopes that Christians typically have for, um, for afterlife. One of them is heaven. The other is New Jerusalem. And they're both present in this passage, but they are not the same thing. That's really important. And so what I want to do is, and notice that, that New Jerusalem is what is going to last. It's what is permanent. And heaven is the place that New Jerusalem is coming from. So let me just really quickly tease out for you what the difference is between heaven and New Jerusalem. Because we typically talk about he, people going to heaven, and, and indeed they do. Um, but that's not the end of the story. Okay, so heaven, Paul will say, is um, we're absent from the body, but present with the Lord. So there's this idea of us being spirit, um, absent from the body, present with the Lord. But in New Jerusalem, um, we have resurrected bodies, um, material, um, bodies like Jesus had. That's a really important distinction. So we are in heaven until we are resurrected uh, to live in God's new creation, new Jerusalem. So heaven is temporary. New Jerusalem is permanent. Um, Heaven, heaven, there's still suffering on earth. There's not suffering in in heaven per se, although in Revelation 6, you can see people um, who are looking down and seeing that earth is not as it should be and crying out to God. So in that way, there's there's quote unquote suffering, but there's still suffering on earth when people are in heaven. But when new Jerusalem comes, when God restores and renews his good creation, which is the eschatological end that everything's moving towards, There's no more suffering. And you can read about that in Revelation 21 and 22. That is a great and beautiful thing. So um, when we talk about heaven, we're talking about a place where sort of a disembodied spirit, where it's a temporary um, euphoria, where we are with God, certainly, but there's still suffering on earth. When we talk about New Jerusalem, which is what Jesus points his followers to as their hope, it is a resurrected physical material body. It's a permanent place where there is no more suffering or sorrow or pain. And God dwells with us. And it's really, really good news. So, um... That's the letter to Philadelphia, uh, filled with promises because the church is running on little strength. And so Jesus meets them where they're at, feeds their soul, and then points them towards their destiny. I hope that feeds your soul today. Whenever you're watching this, um, keep studying the scriptures. They are full of life. And as you do, pay attention to the tone that the letter that the writer uses when he's communicating. God bless you. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for joining us.